Hi, this is Rick Harsh, and this is a master class in the writing of fiction. I have a note here that says that I'm a master, and I do write fiction, and I've taught at all levels, so I am a teacher, a master. You can skip this ad in three days. Today's lesson is on satire. I want to talk about satire. And the question I want to answer is, are there limits to satire? Because I have been reading Robert Coover's um, The Brunus Day of Wrath. Let me show it to you. It's a thousand pages. The book that um, this is a sort of sequel to is The Origin of the Brunists, which was the first book that Coover wrote. He was in his 30s. He finished this when he was, I think, in his 80s. And there's a certain uh, notion going around that this book is not as well written. Well, maybe in some ways it isn't. Maybe line by line, Origin of the Brunus is a little bit better. But this is an extraordinary work of perhaps a... a Dostoevskian work, um, a vast panorama of believable characters um, who are all a little bit nuts, perhaps, but very recognizable people from the United States. You know, you, you do not encounter any characters and say, nah, that kind of person doesn't exist, which you would in my novels because I use satire and, um, you know, satire in, uh, involves hyperbole. And I get a lot more laughs than Coover does. With Coover, it's uh, one long, painful laugh about the United States. And all the more so when you look at the United States as it is today and... Um, now let's especially let's let's focus on the coronavirus just to get across how crazy things are. The wealthiest country in the world with the best possible experts in epidemiology um, is uh, failing utterly to contain the coronavirus. I'm right next to Italy here, and Italy was ravaged by the virus, but the nearby city of Trieste, city, a very, an old city and congested city of 250,000 people or so, had, I have been told, only two or three cases of the virus. Maybe that, what they mean is only two or three died, but either way, that's damn good. Why did, did that work? Because once it was seen that things were bad elsewhere in the regions between here and Lombardia, measures were taken to, uh, very simple measures, were taken to contain the virus. Um, a lockdown, which is a bit extreme uh, as a way of putting it, a lockdown was put in place. And what that basically means is that people just were, were um, prevented from massing and from uh, being with other people and so the virus couldn't spread and, you know, the people had to shut their shops in some cases or work from home. Students had to go to, uh, um, had to, had to go home and uh, go through distance learning. And certainly that probably leads to a lot of uh, um, situations that could be satirized. You know, imagine the Italian home with the big dogs and, the, you know, mother and father who are just fine as long as they don't have to spend every second of every day together. And you could come up with some really crazy satire. But I don't think you can satirize the United States very effectively in this case because... Uh, 
there there doesn't seem to be any hyperbole possible how, how can you exaggerate um trump trump is already an exaggeration how can you exaggerate people who mass together in defiance of common sense medical dictates I mean, we won't wear masks well masks aren't all that effective by themselves there are other things that are important as well but you know when when people uh, the, to to just get at the lunacy of it is that one thing you can usually assume about the human being is they do whatever they can to survive they don't like dying and uh they usually do whatever they can to prevent death. Somehow, a, an enormous number of people in the United States don't seem to quite understand how what they're doing is creating more death. And it's not just um, dumbass right-wing people who mass and have rallies and say this is George Soros who did this and it's not real and things like that. Those people exist and you can't actually exaggerate that kind of lunacy either. It's just, it's straight out lunacy. It's realistic lunacy. And um, there are also, you know, such horrific um, things as, you know, the, the ex excessive number of people imprisoned in the United States, and prisons, of course, are places that, that you know, uh, encourage the virus to spread. Old folks' homes do the same. ICE detention centers do the same. Uh, so the, the, um, the loonies and the people are out, who are not supposed to be lunatics, like the government officials and so on, they're all doing the opposite of what we would normally consider sane. And therefore, um, 117,000 people in the United States have already died, far, more, far, far, far more than any other place in the world. And it's only going to get worse because they've decided they, you know, they've done enough. And they haven't. And uh, by August, 200,000 people will have died. And uh, that that's just absolutely true. So what does that have to do with Robert Coover? Well, Robert Coover um, does not engage in satire. He has a, created a, an extraordinary work. I, I think it's one work. It's about the Brunist uh, Day of Wrath is 1,005 pages. Origin of the Brunist is 441 pages. So you have almost 1,500 pages of the same book. Uh, and he has created a vast panorama of people who are recognizable to anybody who's lived in the United States, from bankers to barbers to coal miners to owners of coal mines and all manner of religious people, um, not just the Brunists, um, the sect he created for the novel, very believably, actually, um, but all kinds of evangelicals, Lutherans, Roman Catholics, and they're all recognizable. And on, on the uh, surface, they're only a little bit crazy in some cases, but none of them are exaggerated. And it, they're, but they satirize themselves. And when it all comes together, what do you get? The United States. It's the most uh, uh, incisive depiction of the United States I've ever read. And, you know, I've written a lot about the United States. And I use satire, but I use hyperbole. And uh, I enjoy it. I think my books are funnier than Coover's. But... Coover nails it in a rather more Dostoevskian way than a um, Voltairean way. You get 
this extraordinary array of people that you recognize and the way they behave and the way that they intermingle, the way they oppose each other, the way they support each other after opposing each other, the way they arm themselves is all just plain how the United States is. It reminds me a little bit of the Latin American novelists. Several have written brilliant novels about dictators, and they're not satires because the dictators are already fucking crazy. I mean, cruel tyrants and so on, but but the, uh, even even the the very concept of tyranny is crazy. So um, what you have is a, a a society where you when you talk about the fabric of the society, fabric becomes when allowed to play out becomes yet just another euphemism for lunacy. The place is absolutely crazy. And the Brunist day of wrath is as good a depiction of the United States as you'll ever read. Go ahead and read mine. Manifold Destiny of Eddie Vegas, I think is a, uh, a very accurate portrayal of the United States, but it does use hyperbole now and then, and it's satire, and it's more funny than this, but if you really want to understand the United States, read the Brunus Day of Wrath. Thank you. Satire? I'll always love satire. I'll always write satire, but I gotta take my hat off, you see I didn't wear a hat today, to Robert Coover, who wrote as good a book as could possibly be written about the United States, I think. <laughs>